The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares, prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Though thou anoints my head with oil, my cup of my cup runneth over, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I have read to you Psalms twenty three verse one and six.
can't go back. I can't go back. And one reason I can't go back is brought me too far. I didn't even turn around now. Oh God, we thank you now. We bless you. We thank you, oh God, for this privilege and this opportunity. We realize, oh God, that you did it again. You brought us through another week's journey. Oh, yeah. And, oh God, for that we are much obliged. We come, oh God, uh, humbled before you as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, we thank you now. We love you. We adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Jeremiah chapter 38, verses 10 through 13. Jeremiah chapter 38. Verses 10 through 13. Then the king commanded Abimelech, the Ethiopian, saying, Take from here 30 men with you and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he dies. So Abimelech took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took from there old clothes and old rags and let them down by ropes into the dungeon to Jeremiah. Then Abimelech, the Ethiopian, said to Jeremiah, please put these old clothes and rags under your armpits, under the ropes. And Jeremiah did so. So they pulled Jeremiah up with ropes and lifted him out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Amen. For a few moments, I want to talk about it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Jeremiah, uh, the prophet of the broken heart, is the writer of this book. Uh, he was called the weeping prophet, but not in a derogatory sense. Uh, he was a man in tears most of the time. God selected this man who had a, mother, a mother's heart and tear-filled eyes to deliver a harsh, a harsh message of judgment. The message that he gave broke his own heart. When we come to chapter 38, Jeremiah is confined to the court of the prison, and he faithfully relays God's word to his people, even though his personal safety is in danger. The princes of Judah considered him a traitor to his country and a discouraging influence among the people. So they get permission from the king to silence Jeremiah by putting him in the dungeon. First, God gave Jeremiah a word to tell to the nation of Judah that the Babylonians were coming. He was even told by God to tell the people that there would be less bloodshed if they surrendered. It wasn't like Jeremiah had made this stuff up. God told him to say it. The problem was that the king, King Zedekiah, had some grandsons and the grandsons did not happily receive the prophecy. Matter of fact, they formed a committee and went to the king to file a formal complaint against him. Listen to what he heard them saying. They said he was self-centered. They said he did not love the king. They said he was not trying to love the people. They questioned whether he had truly heard from God. They question his motives. I think I need to tell you that you 
have to learn how to trust the Lord because even your loved ones and your best friends can talk about you behind your back. When the princes went to the king, he said, uh, you all do what you want to. So these young men couldn't convince the king to take corrective action. But here's what he did. He said, y'all do whatever you want to do. And I've learned of all the people that you don't want to fall into the hands of, you don't want to fall into the hands of angry people. That's why you have to be careful in relationships, jobs, marriages, friendships. It's not good to attach yourself to someone who's always angry, always complaining. To them, it appeared that nothing good happens. It's always, if the sun is shining, it's too hot. If it's raining, it's too wet. Nothing you can say satisfies. I tell you, you ought to be able to, there, there is a bright side, but you surely have to look for it. They said, let's put him to death. The ultimate act. But it's not until God says it's over that it's over. I'm looking at some people in this place right now that can testify. You shouldn't even be here. Should have been sleeping, could have been sleeping in your grave, could have been locked up someplace in whatever it is you're in. But God showed mercy and grace for your situation. I know you're looking churchy. But if justice had been done, if God had turned his back on you and your family, you wouldn't be praising his name today. You would still be in your sorrows. They took Jeremiah into the prison and dropped him into a dungeon. Now, the dungeon was an underground uh, chamber for storing water. They were designed similar to the shape of a bottle, and they were made from clay. As time would go by, the clear water would be on the top, but the dirty water would float to the bottom of the dungeon. In order to protect the water and to keep it cool, they would block the opening at the top with a stone cover to keep trash out of it. They not only use the dungeon for good, but they also use it as a device for evil. The dungeon could be used as a torture chamber device as well. They got some rope and lowered him down into the pit in the middle of the prison. Keep in mind now, he's in prison, but now he's going to a lower portion of the prison. They dropped him into a dungeon that no longer was used to store water. And it was out of water, but uh, what, what were left were the remains. Uh, we call it mire. It was a sticky substance, uh, 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 like gunk, uh, like an all slick. And because the dungeon was taller than he was, he began to sink as they put a stone over his head. This dungeon is big enough to hold you in, yet big enough for you to move around in. For some of us, your dungeon may be your marriage, a struggle with drugs and alcohol, uh, an addiction to, to pornography, uh, your temper, your financial circumstances, your family. Your dungeon could be anything that, 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 that got you struggling right now, got you in a dark place, and if you're not careful, it'll make you lose all hope. Yes, when, they put, when they put you into a dungeon, it's nobody but you and God. When they put you, when you're in a dungeon, it's nobody but you and God. Isn't that how struggles are? Even though you may be going through the same types of struggles, the same types of pains, the same types of inner demons, when it's all said and done, it's just you and God. You and your best friend in church are dealing with spouses who don't do right. Yeah, they, they may not have come home yet. But when you walk into your empty house, it's just you and God. You may be struggling with an addiction and 
go to group meetings and AA and NAA meetings and hear about how others are dealing with the same addictions that you are. But when the meeting is over, it's just you and God. When they captured Jeremiah, they dropped him into the dungeon. When they left him there to die, it was still nobody but him and God. Look here, he cried tears that nobody saw. He prayed prayers that nobody heard. He thought thoughts that nobody heard. He made steps that nobody saw. That, that, that should teach you that. That's why when you testify about how good the Lord has been to you and people don't get it, it's because they can't relate to what you've gone through like you have. That's why when you tell people he brought you from a mighty long way, they'll never be as excited as you are and they can't tell it like you tell it because they have not lived it like you have. I need to tell somebody here, no matter how bad it looks, it ain't over. Excuse my linguistics, but, but while we were in trouble, God wasn't on vacation. Even though we couldn't see him, God was working things out. Yeah, isn't that just like him? It appears to me that God does some of his, some of his best work when we don't even expect it. He makes ways for you when you're broke. He heals your body even before you go to surgery. He gives you joy when your world is turned upside down. He heals you when you don't deserve it. Uh, he comforts you when you don't even ask him to do so. He had nothing. He had not, had not eaten in days. Uh, nothing to eat. Nothing to drink. Uh, sinking in the mire. And when he looked up for help, yeah, they, they, they lowered uh, a line to help him. And I believe that Jeremiah must have thought it was strange that the king didn't send help with some new robes or, or new vines, but they sent down a rope made of old rags and old clothing. It wasn't new. It wasn't old stuff, uh, but it was old stuff from the king's house. It was old stuff, but it was old stuff from the king's house. Look, can I tell somebody that it's not just new stuff that's going to save you. If you're in trouble, it's not Buddha or Allah or gospel of, gospel of inclusion or new age theology or reincarnation theology or a social gospel that's going to save you. No, no. It's going to be the hand me down. The same stuff that saved mama and them, uh, the same stuff that saved grandmama and granddad, uh, is going to uh, to be the grace of God. Uh, it's going to be the power of God. It's going to be Jesus who died on a cross, uh, buried in a tomb, and got up with all power in his hands. Uh, see, you cannot get around the cross. Uh, you can't ignore nor his living and dying and living again. You cannot ignore the resurrection. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't. You, you may not want to accept it, but it did happen. My Bible says it happened, and I believe that it happened. Well, they lowered the rope down, and he wrapped it underneath his arm. Let, let me tell you what I saw here. The wrong kind of help can hurt us. They were not told to lift him by his arm or by a leg. If you put me by my arm, you, you might, you help me, but might put my arm out of socket. If you grab my leg, you might pull me up, but I may not be able to walk because you might pull it out of socket. Yeah, they, they, they were told not to lift him just any kind of way. Wrap it underneath his arms. My brothers and sisters, that's what we need. 
we need the right kind of help. Everybody coming by ain't offering the right kind of help. Yeah, we, we, we need somebody to throw us a lifeline. Somebody with more resources than we have. More strength than we could ever possess to help us in our trouble. Well, God has the power, yes he does, uh, to help you if you give him the chance. He can change your situation. Uh, he can change your circumstances. Well, I might need to ask anybody, has the Lord ever changed your situation? Has the Lord ever changed your circumstances? The key element here is that as the line dangles in front of us, we have a decision to make. To either stay in the dungeon, stay in the muck, or get lifted out. That's the decision that somebody in this house needs to make today. You've been hanging around the Lord. You've been hanging around the church. And the lifeline is so close, you can feel it as it breezes by. Don't put it off any further. The Lord can deliver you. He can help you. He will if you give him a chance. If I saw the lifeline in front of me, I wouldn't wait for the choir to sing. I, I wouldn't wait for the, uh, for the chairs to be placed in the aisle. I will come to Jesus while I have a chance. I'm through now, but there's one other thing. In verse 13, it says, after pulling Jeremiah up with the ropes. They say, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Did you get that? Now, he was in prison in a dungeon. Well, they brought him out of the dungeon, but he's still in the prison. Look at here, look, 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 look at here. The Lord may have brought you out and brought you through, but it's not over yet. He may have healed you and delivered you, but it's not over yet. A few more ups and a few more downs. A few more rising of the sun and the setting of the same. We will have to bear our burdens in the heat of the day, but that's all right. The Lord continues to lift us up and deliver us through this world of sorrow. It's not over yet. We still have to live in this world of sin and temptation. It's not over yet because of what happened one Friday and happened on Sunday morning. One Friday he died for your sins and my sins. They hung him high. He dropped his head and he died. They buried him in a barred tomb early Sunday morning. He got up. It ain't over. Yeah, still got a struggle, but it's a fixed fight. All you have to do is keep moving, keep trusting, and keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Don't get sidetracked. Uh, don't, don't, don't get like Peter, start looking at your circumstance. Uh, keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, you know how that teacher drive here. Keep, keep, keep your eyes in front of you. Keep your eyes on Jesus and watch him deliver you. Watch, watch him do what he's been doing all the days of your life. The Lord hadn't just now started bringing you through. The Lord hadn't just now started keeping you. The Lord has not just now started delivering you down through the years. The Lord has been taking care of us. Oh, yeah, I just want you to know, young people, it ain't over yet. That, 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 that's why when you leave kindergarten, you go to grade school, you be elementary and then go to middle and then go to high. It's never over. Then you go on to school, to technical school, or go to career. It's not over. Yeah. It's always some more to do. Yes, but that's all right. The right. God we serve, yeah. he'll give you what you need. Yeah. He'll empower you with all that you need. And look how he does it. He don't give it to us week by week and month by month. Give us this day our daily bread. You ought to celebrate the goodness of the Lord on this day because he's let us see a brand new day, uh, a day in which we've never seen before. And Lord, I thank you for another day. God bless you. God keep you. It ain't over yet until we see him face to face. But on this side, on this side, 
We don't walk by ourselves. He'll hold your hand. He'll lead and he'll guide you if you'll give him a chance. But you got to keep your, you have to keep your focus on him. Keep your eyes on Christ and watch him do what he does best. Lead in God. Take care. Provide. Protect. He keeps on blessing us. God bless you. God keep you. Maybe there's somebody here you've been searching for a church home and the Lord has touched your heart that this is the place. I invite you to come as the Holy Spirit leads you. Come now while you have this opportunity. Tomorrow or next week is not promised. Come as a candidate for baptism by letter and all by a Christian experience. However the Holy Spirit leads you, we invite you to come now.